Well, last week we talked about two people. The lady who had the issue of blood for 12 years and went to everyone, everywhere to try to find some way to cure this disease. Because of that disease, she was considered unclean under the Levitical law, which means she could be with no person, she could no, be nowhere, anything she touched was considered unclean. And anything, any person that touched something she touched was considered unclean. So she was strictly isolated according to the law for 12 years. Then the second person was Bartimaeus, a blind man in Jericho. He sat by the gate begging. We don't know how long he was begging, but he was there apparently for some time. He probably lived there. He probably, that was his, probably his residence. He probably slept there. Which means he was also, in a sense, unclean. He probably was quite dirty. Hair matted, beard matted, unwashed, body odor. Not a very pleasant sight. One woman unclean because of her disease and is considered unclean by the law, even though her attempts to keep herself clean were numerous. Another unclean because of his lack of attention to himself and his blindness. Neither one of these individuals very pleasant, probably, to the, to the general populace, but both were healed by Christ. I said we were all blind to our uncleanness. And we all try to clean ourselves up, but we don't succeed. But in spite of that, Christ is there. Yes. Amen. Now I said there was a little catch to this. There's actually three little catches to it. If you go to Mark, to the stories, you can see and read between the lines. One is in chapter 5, and one is in chapter 10. You see, there are catches to this, because in both of these cases, what happened was that Jesus did not heal people just because they were sick. There's nothing in the Bible which states that he healed every person who was sick, every person that was blind. You see, there's a catch. These people, like ourselves, have to come to him. Both of these individuals made an effort to come to Christ. If you look at the lady who had that issue, unclean, isolated, ostracized, looking at Christ who's surrounded by his disciples and throngs of people, she couldn't just stay on the sidelines. She had to come to him. Which means she had to go through the crowd of people to get to Christ. She had to come to him physically. Bartimaeus was also a blind person who saw or heard Christ with the throngs of people. And he cried out. He cried out loudly. Even though he was told to keep quiet, he cried out loudly. He came to Christ verbally. But they both came to Christ. That's the first point. Second point is, they were humble. If you have a disease which you're not allowed out in public with, it makes you humble. Maybe it shouldn't, but it does. And if you feel you're going to be arrested if you're out in public, 
that makes you even more humble. So this person had to find a way to get to Christ without revealing herself. Now, humble, humbleness does not mean shyness or reticence. It means not being proud, not making something of yourself, not being more than you really are. And this lady did that. She quietly worked her way through the crowd to come to Christ. Bartimaeus was a little different. It says in chapter 11 that when he called a second time and Christ heard him and said come he threw off his cloak now I don't know what people wear under their cloaks in those days it's sort of like the idea of what, what's the Scotsman wearing under his kilt <laughs> but I would imagine it was not very much if anything and perhaps he was probably <laughs> only had his birthday suit on, I don't know. But he revealed his whole person, his whole uncleanness, his whole self to the crowd. He hid nothing. Mm -hmm. We often hide things. Mm -hmm. He hid nothing. The lady with the issue of blood also gave everything. She went through the crowd regardless of what it was. And that's the third point. They were both bold and desperate. This lady with the issue of blood had tried everything. She'd been to every doctor. She had tried everything. She spent all her money. This was her last chance. She could either stay in the background on the edge of the crowd and just hope that Christ would do something but her faith was that if she could just touch him, she would be healed. And so she boldly made her way through the crowd, knowing that if she were found, she could be in prison. She could be in prison and locked up and who knows what in those days. But she still went. And she touched him. She was desperate. And her faith and desperation allowed her to be healed. Bartimaeus was the same thing. He knew this was his last chance. If he, Christ could heal him if he could only get to Christ. So throwing his garment aside, exposing all his dirtiness, all his nakedness, all his unfilth, all his filthiness, he cried out to Christ to heal him. And Christ heard him and healed him. And he followed Christ after that. Now, the idea of this is we all are blind. We all are unclean. We all have our problems. It says that Bartimaeus was an accursed person in an accursed city. We live in an accursed world. The question is, are we, do we have the other facets necessary? Are we going to come to Christ? Because he's not necessarily going to heal us or change us otherwise. Are we have humble enough? Because when you're humble, it means that you're going to rely entirely on him, not on somebody else or something else. And the third thing, are we bold enough to take the steps that are necessary for him to recognize us? Sometimes God only seems to act when people are so desperate that there's no other way out. And this is the case when the lady with the blood was very nice. They were desperate. They had no other options. They had no other choice. The other had to be bold and humble at the same time, or else they probably would not have received healing. Does that work today? Yes. Yes, 
told a story a few days, weeks ago about Theo Fleury, hockey player, who had a career in the NHL, but who squandered it all on drugs, alcohol, parties. He lost his career. He lost his families. He had more than one because he had married more than once. He was estranged from his children. He lost his fortune. He lost just about everything. He had tried many things to become clean. But none of them really worked because he went right back to his old ways. He became desperate to the point of trying to commit suicide. And apparently the only thing that stopped him was that he had a phone call from his son at that time. A son he had not heard of for some time. And after that he fell and prayed for God to take this away from him. He was desperate. He humbled himself before God. And he said he fell asleep after that and woke up with no urge to smoke, drink, or gamble Jesus. again. Thank you, Jesus. It still happens. Yes. Irma McKinley was a lady who was a Christian who was injured in an accident and became progressively worse despite seeing many, many people. For 18 years, her disease became worse. She became more crippled. She became more difficult to move about until she was, she was confined to a wheelchair, essentially unable to move. One Christmas Eve, her wheelchair overtipped, overturned, and she was lying on the floor helpless, knowing full well she could die there because no one else was due for some time. And she called it again to Christ. And he healed her at that moment. She walked away from the wheelchair. Yes. Her story is documented and authenticated. You see, people have to be sometimes desperate, but they also have to be bold. They have to be humble. And we all have to come to Christ. Faith is important because without faith you won't do the other three. But that's the story of these people. One, an issue of blood, unclean for years, who had the boldness to come to Christ and touch his garment. Yes. One, a blind man, blind for years, probably filthy, but bared himself to the world to come to Christ. Both were healed. The same still happens today. Yes. And that is something to think about. Mm -hmm.